Hello, classmates and professor. My name is Gwen Teresa Carter. Everyone definitely calls me Gwen. I decided to do my presentation on the Dada art movement. So the Dada art movement was basically an artistic and literary movement that began in Zurich, Switzerland. And I do apologize because I know I'm saying that so wrong. So the movement arose as a reaction to World War I and the nationalism that many thought had led to the actual war. So the aim of Dada art and activities were both to help to stop the war and to actually vent frustration with the nationalist and Bujiris conventions that had led to it. So the movement actually dissipated with the establishment of surrealism but the ideas it gave rose to have become the cornerstones of various categories of modern and contemporary art, as you can see in the pictures. So Dada's focus was on making works that generated difficult questions about society, the role of the artist, and the purpose of art. Now, there is little agreement on how the word Dada was invented, but one of the most common origin stories is that, is that Richard Holsenbeck found the name by plunging a knife at random into a dictionary. That's just a little fun fact. So artists like Hans Arp were intent on incorporating chance into the creation of works of art. Again, as you can see in the picture. The introduction of chance was a way for Dadaist to challenge artistic norms and to actually question the role of the artist in the artistic process. Now, also, Dada artists are known for their use of ready-made objects, everyday objects that could be bought and presented as art with little manipulation by the actual artist. So, Marcel Duchamp. Now, he was actually the first artist to use a ready-made object, and his choice of a urinal was guaranteed to actually challenge and offend even his fellow artists. Now, Mr. Marcel Duchamp, scandalous L-H-O-O-Q, is an altered postcard reproduction of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Now, Duchamp penciled a mustache and a goatee over Mona Lisa's upper lip and chin and retitled the artwork. Now, also, the artist in Zurich published a Dada magazine, and they actually held art exhibits that helped spread their anti-war anti-art message. So here are actually three of the magazines that were published. So this is Tristan Tazara. I think I'm saying that correct. He became the actual leader of the movement and began an unrelenting campaign to spread data ideas, showering French and Italian writers and artists with actual letters. 
Now, Roy Hansman, Hannah Hotch, John Hartfield, and George Grove were the main artists who developed the strident political satire of Berlin data. Now, they actually, the technique that most of them trusted to deliver was a collage of photographs and text cut from contemporary newspapers and magazines. Now, this is actually work of George Grove. He gradually evolved from the protest of Dada to a more focused expression of his disgust and the cruelty of the Borgians. And this is actually a painting of Max Ernest. Like most of the great artists associated with Dada, he saw imaginative, imaginative excuse me, possibilities in the techniques that the Dada was employed for their anti-art activities. Ernest took a more lyrical approach by creating a visual poetry built from the unconscious associations of images. So this is one of Jean Arp's um, paintings. He was a major artist associated with Dada, and he also began to explore Dada's techniques in a more positive and creative manner. And this is a painting, which is one of my favorite, from Kurt Witters. He created hundreds of MERS collages in assemblages. The works were influenced by cubism and constructivism, but were purely abstract with all representational references removed. Now the end of Dada in Zurich followed the Dada Forcified Day event in April 1919 that by design turned into a riot. Now, although Dada only lasted for a few years, its impact was considerable. The Dada has introduced and explored techniques and concepts that we do take for granted in art today.